Hello everyone, welcome to our hands-on training. Today, we'll show you how to pre-process Nmap data yourself using the Nmap Processing Tool, NPT, a plugin of the Nmap Box software. NPT is a pre-processing software for Nmap data that generates ready-to-use Nmap Level 2A from Level 1B data. The input consists of two separate images covering the visible near-infrared, B-near, and the shortwave infrared SWIR spectral regions. These images are not georeferenced and have no projection, and the data need to be spectrally pre-processed prior to any analyses. The output is accurately georeferenced and represents a stack of the VNIR and SWIR input files containing ready-to-use surface reflectance spectra. Let's start by opening QGIS Desktop. Please ensure you are running a current version and have the up-to-date Nmap Box plugin, as well as NPT installed, all in the same environment. You can find detailed installation instructions in the link below this video. The input data needed for this exercise is available as a download package specifically for this tutorial. There is an Nmap scene provided by the German Aerospace Center DLR, and in addition, we will use a digital elevation model and Sentinel-2 data, both provided by ASA. You can find the full Nmap scene, as well as a smaller subset, which might be useful on computers with low memory resources. The Nmap Level 1B zip folder used for this tutorial contains an acquisition covering Berlin and the surrounding area. Extract the zip archive on your local disk and inspect the extracted files. Depending on the data format in which the Level 1B data was ordered from the ground segment, the raster data may have different file extensions such as BSQ. Now, launch the Nmap box by clicking on the Nmap box icon and load the Nmap Level 1B spectral image vnir.tiff and Nmap Level 1B spectral image swir.tiff image datasets. Simply drag and drop the TIFF files into the Nmap box. These two separate images cover the visible near infrared vnir and the shortwave infrared swir spectral regions as captured by the two Nmap detectors. Unfold the respective entries in the Data Sources panel to explore some metadata of the files. Both images have 1000 by 1024 pixels in X and Y direction. That is, if you are using the full Nmap scene, the VNIR image contains 91 and the SWIR image contains 133 spectral bands. Note that both images have no coordinate reference system, CRS for short. This is because Nmap Level 1B data are provided in sensor geometry. To visualize the first spectral band of the VNIR image, unfold the Bands entry in the Data Sources tab, right-click on Band 1, and press Open in New Map. Then, click the Spectral Library icon in the Nmap Box toolbar to open a new spectral library window and click anywhere in the map window. The spectral signature corresponding to the pixel appears in the spectral library window. Now, we do exactly the same with the SWIR image. Open the first band in a new map and visualize any SWIR spectral signature in a new spectral library view. The Nmap Level 1B data you see in the spectral library plots are top of atmosphere radiance spectra with each spectral band scaled according to specific gain and offset values given in the image metadata. The visualized spectra can therefore not be directly interpreted as top of atmosphere radiance, but first must be converted. Even if all bands were equally scaled, the spectra would not be comparable to other hyperspectral EO data as top of atmosphere radiance is still affected by numerous spatiotemporal varying effects that originate, for example, from the atmospheric state at the acquisition time. Okay, so the spectral information requires some work. Let's look at the data from a spatial perspective. Right-click into map number one and press a link with other maps. Then, zoom into the image and compare the Wiener and Swer images. Oops, a spatial offset between both images is clearly visible. Less than one pixel across track, but around 20 pixels along track. This means that the spectral information of both Nmap detectors cannot be interpreted together without pre-processing. 
panning through the image also reveals some vertical striping effects. You see that Nmap Level 1B data cannot be directly used for downstream remote sensing applications, and the data even includes sensor-induced effects that are not directly visible, such as spectral smile or keystone. Now that we have explored the need for pre-processing of the Level 1B format, we want to apply NPT, the NMAP processing tool, to generate orthorectified and atmospherically corrected bottom of atmosphere reflectance, or level 2A data. As the name might suggest, NPT was developed specifically for the pre-processing of NMAP data. As this process is pretty sensor specific, the tool works with NMAP, but not with other sensors data. Okay. Open the NPT graphical user interface to run the processing chain by opening the Applications menu, clicking on NPT, and selecting Start NPT GUI. For the NMAP Level 1B image, select the provided NMAP Level 1B zip archive containing the NMAP scene. For better results, we add the digital elevation model. Optionally, we can add a reference image as spatial reference for image co-registration. We use a Sentinel-2 band. All other parameters are either extracted from the metadata or set to default values so that their specification is not strictly needed when generating level 2A data. However, they may improve the output quality. You can find some assistance on specific parameter settings in the documentation linked in the NPT GUI. I will set the output file format to NV, but otherwise, Keep the default values, set an output directory, and press Run to start the processing. This takes a few minutes. You can follow the current status in the log panel or the QGIS Python console. While the GUI is pretty simple and the required input rather minimal, the algorithms working in the background of the NPT processing chain are really complex. You can find a lot of details in the documentation as well as in the references link below, or if you like complex algorithms and programming, you can use the open source NPT Python package directly or integrate that into your own Python code. Once processing is complete, the output directory is indicated in the log panel. If you check the output folder, you will find NMAP level 2A image data and a couple of other files, such as metadata, and several quality layers. Again, details on each file produced can be found in the NPT documentation. The developers are continuously working on improving NPT, and in future, additional layers such as atmospheric parameter retrieval maps will become available. Okay, let's check out our result. Load the level 2A image into the NMAP box. You can simply drag and drop it to the NMAP box window. Unfold the entry in the Data Sources panel to explore some metadata of the file. Now, the image has a dimension of 1,266 by 1,204 pixels in X and Y direction, and contains 206 bands. These different dimensions, when compared with Level 1B data, are due to the orthorectification applied by NPT, as well as a result of merging of the veneer and SWIR data into a single data cube. Furthermore, the image is now projected in WGS84-UTM Zone 33N, as UTM is the default setting. Well then, let's visualize the image. Right-click on the file in the Data Sources panel and select Open in New Map. This time, we choose True Color to visualize an RGB band combination. Wow, do you see the difference compared to the Level 1B product? I don't mean the color that's just the visualization, but the entire scene appears turned. There you go. That is the difference between sensor geometry and map projection. Let's open a spectral library window too. Ah, that looks more like the spectra you were used to, right? The spectral information now contains atmospherically corrected bottom of atmosphere reflectance data, scaled between 0 and 10,000 by default. The two detector images have been merged so that their spectral information can now be used together. In addition, spatiotemporally varying interferences on the spectra have been corrected as far as possible. Now you could use your self generated NMAP level 2A data for subsequent remote sensing applications. Okay, folks, that's it for the day. 
I hope you enjoyed our exercise and took away the message that thorough pre-processing is important and how it affects your data.